welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony G, um, or Tony Green. I'm Tony Green. I'm going to get this show started as quickly as I can today. But before I do, I just want to say good morning to everybody. Um, and to say, I hope you had a really, a, like, just an amazing weekend. Um, we're going into fall now and the weather's changing and this, you know, summer is my favorite time of the year. Absolutely 100% my favorite time of the year because we can just do so much during the summer. The, the weather is beautiful and, um, there are so many beautiful flowers out and I just, I love summer. I'm, I'm truly, I'm a true summer baby. Um, but now that we're going into fall and the evening is getting cooler where I live, uh, it's just, it's kind of, I don't love it. <laughs> I definitely do not love it. It is not my favorite thing. I can't bike as much. The wind picks up. The wind is colder. Oh, life is tragic. <laughs> um, okay, so today I will be taking callers and answering their questions, helping them connect to loved ones on the other side. I will also be answering questions for people in the chat section of YouTube. So everybody on YouTube, if I miss your question, please forgive me because I don't always, sometimes the chat goes really fast and um, I can't get to everybody. <clears throat> I can't, <clears throat> excuse me, I can't get to everybody or I might miss your question as more people come on and just start popping questions in for me. Um, also, if you would like to call in and ask your question on air, the number is 845-277-9131. Again, that's 845-277-9131. If you do have a question, please make sure you have an exact question um, or a connection. And for a connection, if you want to connect with a loved one on the other side, I just need the first name of the person and their relationship to you, like Judy, my mom, uh, Mike, my grandpa, whatever it may be. And then I'll do the best I can to do the best I can for you. So for those of you that I'm... <clears throat> My throat is getting super froggy. So I'm going to say that this is <clears throat> someone trying to come through for someone. Because believe it or not, that does happen. Okay. So I'm hearing that somebody, um, somebody who's listening maybe will not come through in the chat or on the call log. <clears throat> There's somebody who has crossed over who's on the other side that had es esophageal cancer, esophageal cancer. Um, definitely something with their throat. It made it very difficult to talk. They could not. <clears throat> oh, my goodness gracious. Um, they could not have good communication, especially during the end. They want you to know that they're okay. They made it home. Um, and they're just singing this one part of this one song, which is, it's a Post Malone song. I mean, it's the, uh, I'm better now. But the, the, the song is like a, a kind of a breakup song, but they're just this one verse, I'm better now, I'm better now. So oh, just so you know that, and now my voice is back. We'll see how long that lasts for. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say hi to Heather and Kathy. You guys have be been waiting a long time on YouTube for me. I did answer your question, Kathy. I hope that was helpful for you. If you call in, I might be able to give you more details about that. And Heather, thank you for checking in with me every Monday morning. I know Genevieve will be on soon if she's not already on. And I know Matthew Moore listens 
every single week. Thank you, Matthew, for for listening and joining into the show. So I see a couple of people. Uh, I think I saw Cheryl o, or Cheryl O is on. Thank you. Good afternoon, Cheryl. I'm wondering if my wedding rings will ever appear again. Um, well, Cheryl, that's kind of an open. Yes, they have appeared again, just not to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting two things for you, Cheryl. And if I'm wrong, I want to apologize. I see like a children's toy, toy chest. Look through the children's toy chest. Now, I'm not saying you're going to find the wedding rings there, but I do feel like I don't know why. I just feel like you need to go through your children's, the, your grandchildren's toy chest and you need to look at what's in there or a toy chest that you packed away or a toy chest that you packed away, like a chest, a chest that you, you packed away at the same time as uh, losing your your wedding this is not a wedding ring folks it's not i point to it but just because it's a ring i'm i'm not engaged i'm not married i don't i don't like to play reindeer games with people so no not engaged not married um yeah i know that was a crazy way of saying that um uh, um but okay um a chest that you pack some things away in right around the time your rings went missing. If they're not in the chest, they might be around it. Um, I just feel like you need to go through a chest, uh, whether it be a toy chest or something you put clothes in, whatever it is. They're showing me it's in something that is like um, filled with something that maybe you put away for a while, like you were packing things away. I'm not sure if that's helpful, Cheryl. I I certainly hope it is. I'm going to take one more question from YouTube because my YouTube people get really, I don't always get to get to them um, because I'm so busy taking callers. But my, I love these guys too, so I want to get to them. So the next person is, uh, oh, thank you. I, I can't pronounce your name. Well, actually, the truth is I can't see your name. <laughs> But it starts with an M. Um, thank you so much for the compliment. That's that's truly so kind of you. <clears throat> that is very kind of you. Um, really was so helpful. Uh, Kathy, absolutely my pleasure. Kathy wanted to know if she was going to get a specific job. Kathy, here's what I'm going to say to you. I do feel like you are going to get that job. I get a solid yes on it, but I feel like there's going to be something with that job that's going to make you kind of go, oh, wait a minute, wait, whoa, you didn't tell me this during the interview. You know, we can take a job and keep looking. We can accept a position and keep looking. I feel like there's going to be something, Kathy, um, that either right when you accept the job or right after you start the job, you're going to find out they're going to have some demands of you that that are you didn't expect or that they didn't verbalize. And you're going to have to make the choice of, okay, do, do I want to do this? It's okay to keep looking. Sometimes we get a filler position. And I feel like you need to take that position. If you if if you don't, if you don't have a position, take that position and another position is going to come, but that position won't come for like, um, I want to say like a month and a half. Yeah, like a month and a half. The next position is going to be presented to you and it's going to be a much better opportunity. OK, now let me tell you something. P I've been called out on this when I tell people. Just take the job until you find the better job. People are like, well, companies, you know, if you make a commitment to a company, listen, if you're not working out, that company is going to let you go quickly. They're not going to be like, well, she's not working out. We're going to keep her on for the next, you know, whatever. They're going to let you go. They're going to replace you. They're going to call the next person who applied and put 
that next person in your place. Companies just do that, okay? So don't feel for a moment um, that if something better comes along for you, that you cannot take it, okay? You can take it. Um, and companies do the exact same thing. If you're not working out, you're going to be replaced. And so if they're not working out, you can do the same thing, okay? Do it with integrity, of course. Do it with integrity, but yes. Um, okay, I am going to go to our first caller. Our first caller is going to be 727. Dun, dun, dun. Hello, 727. How are you today? I need to back up this. I keep cutting my head off on the camera. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for calling in. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Lisa. I'm calling from Florida. Okay, Lisa. How can I help you today? What's your question or connection? Yes. So I'm having some trouble with two women who uh, are angry at me right now. And um, I'm just wondering if you see it dying down soon or if they're going to keep going with it. A little bit of a harassment situation threatening me. Um, mm. Yeah, thank you so much for letting me know what you're saying, feeling. Okay, so the first thing I'm hearing is that song from Frozen. Let it go, let it go. Uh, <laughs> let all the BS go. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to say to you is there are just some toxic people out there. And I've used this statement before, and I know it sounds really harsh. But, you know, I just want to say there are adult bullies and narcissists. And, yes. and what I'm going to say. are nailing it. Yeah. Nailing it. And what I'm going to say is if somebody's a trash bag full of garbage that needs to be taken to the city dump, you don't have to take them to the city dump, but you can sure enough keep them on your curb so they can no longer affect you. Um, I have had yeah. someone in and out of my life that I can't kept giving them another chance and giving them another chance and a full grown adult woman. And, you know, at some point you just have to say, this is not my energy. I am permanently letting this go. I, I'm not this kind of person. I don't want to be around people like this. I don't want this yeah. energy, this behavior, this toxicity in my life. Now, people mistake empathy with um, protecting yourselves. Like we sometimes people will say, oh, but and make excuses for people. These are full, but grown adults. If you don't know how to behave, if you do not know how to not lie, not cheat, cheat, lie, or if you do not know how to not be toxic or not be a bully, if every time I do something you don't like, you're telling everybody you know, or you're just continually lying yes. or you're just being a, an adult bully, an adult teenager, get to step in. There are millions of people in this world. There is no need to have mm -hmm. people in your life that do not honor who you want to be, who you are moving forward as. Amen. So, I, Amen. What I would say to you is, yeah, they're going to keep being bullies because bullies bully. That's what they do. But you need to <clears throat> cut it and move on with your life. And just don't even uh, the one thing yeah. that I know is what you pay attention to is what you are being what your acknowledgement, what you're being acknowledged, what will come to you. I can't, why can't I say that sentence yeah. right now? What you pay attention to, like if you're paying attention to, oh my God, are they talking about me? Oh my goodness, are they this, are they that? You're going to be more aware of it. So leave them with love, you know, say God bless these people, but bless them away from me. And then don't let that energy come back to you. Um, and, and don't feel bad about moving on from people who can't behave like an adult, who can't have yeah. character and integrity, um, because they're yeah. not going yeah. to change at this point. They are not going to change at this point. 
Okay. Yeah. I hope this was helpful for you. No, I, I, yeah, no, I agree with everything you said. I'm just, um, uh, I keep hoping that this person will leave my life. Like I've cut them off as blocked. I've done the energy work. I'm not obsessing and thinking about them. But my main question was, do you see them like letting go of, of the idea that they can be around me after I've cut them off, blocked them, done everything I can? Are they going to let go? Yes. Um, but you have to, um, they are going to let go. They're going to try to reach out one more time. What, at least one of them is going to try to reach out one more time. You know, we always think we have to give a response to be nice or kind. You know, I don't. I don't. don't. Respond. You have to like. No, no. Yeah, no, good. No. As long as you no, have no, no response. Don't be I'm done. Zero. As long I'm as you. I'm already doing that, girl. Yeah. You are as so long as you, you are so on point. As Love you. As, thank you. As long as you have absolutely no response, they will go. And I, I Not. do hear, and I, I'm going to tell you this, I do hear that they're going to have bigger fish to fry. And people like this need somebody that keeps that energy going back and forth. So I feel like they're going to pick a new victim, so to say, and have that person be their antagonist energy. You just move on. And live your life the way you live your life. And thank you so much for calling in. I'm going directly to the next caller who is 386. 386, how are you today? <clears throat> Hello. I'm good. Thank you so very much, Tony, for taking my call. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Absolutely. My pleasure. How can I help you? What's your question or your connection you would like to make? Okay. I would really like some insight and kind of advice on how to proceed with the relationship I'm in. Um, what is the intention? You know, there was a, a month-long disconnect. We broke up, and uh, we've been together since February, but we got back together. And I, I, in the last week and a half, I've noticed a change for the better in really like the feeling of sincerity from the other person, but there's still other things that are totally different from the first six months of our relationship, that, like keeping me distant, keeping me, um, like during certain times or away from certain people. Like, I don't know if he said things about me that weren't true when we broke up, and so now he's trying to keep them from talking to me so it doesn't get back to me. Or if this is just a temporary relationship, friends with benefits thing in his mind, or th is there something more? Is he's saying, uh, you know, a future? But I don't. I was just. I'm I'm second guessing the intentions where he's coming from and what I should, if I should trust him or not. Okay. Because okay, I got I just, it. I just I'm too trusting. <laughs> I got it. I got it. And I'm going to I'm going to make a slight correction in your statement. You are trusting, but sometimes we want the end goal so badly that we're not looking at the race we're running, okay? So we are wanting it to be like a 5k when we should be looking at it like it's a marathon. And what I mean by that is we meet somebody and the first 3 months always go fabulous. And the first three months are fabulous because we haven't seen any warning signs. We haven't seen any real flaws. Everybody's on their best behavior. Um, even us, we are on our best yep. behavior. We're showing up as that really, you know, who we think they want us to be. After the first three months, we slowly slide into who we really are. And that's when we figure out, do I like this person or do I not? That's when we start asking the real questions and we put the real pressure on. So around the six month mark, we're typically looking at the other person going, okay, where is this going? That Now, let me be 1 million percent clear about this. If you are letting somebody slip their ding dong in your ho-ho or slip their ho-ho in your ding dong, whatever it is, you have a right to know how serious they are 
about you. You have the right to know what their intentions are. If they do not want to answer, if they are evasive in their answer, or if their answer does not match the energy that they're putting in or their behaviors, you've got your answer. We want to believe that it might be something different. And we also want it to go very, very quickly. Like we want that commitment. We want it locked down. That's the nature of a woman. That is, we are nesters. It's not always our fault. We, especially women, once we get to a certain point, we're not playing anymore. Like if we're 18, we can play. Once we're like past a certain age, we're not playing anymore. Like, listen, if you want to play, go get yourself a toy. Go get something you can blow up and play with. I'm, I'm not that person. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not a blow up person. Don't, don't play with me. Now I am going to tell you, <clears throat> you already know the answers to the questions you're asking. And I am also going to tell you, as difficult as this might be to hear, and I'm sorry, um, because sometimes <clears throat> we're hoping somebody will say to us, no, this person is really like this, and it has a shot. But the truth of the matter is, <clears throat> somebody who goes to or takes a break for a month, yeah, after that, you, you need to reevaluate why are we putting up with this and why did we let them just pop right back in and start over like there was never anything wrong. So what, what I'm going to say to you, is this going to be a long term relationship? The answer to that question is, well, how much do you want to put up with from this guy? How long do you want this to go on? This can be as long term as you want it to be. As long as you're willing to concede and what's the, the approach? As long as you're willing to concede and you're willing to allow this type of behavior. Okay. You already have major, major red flags going off here. Sirens buzzing. Um, for you to stay in this situation, you basically at this point have to dumb down and say, these things are not big deals, but you're calling in and you're asking about them because you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, these are big deals. These are deal breakers. So for you moving forward, I'm not going to tell you, leave a person, stay with a person because our heart is going to do what our heart is going to do. Our heart is going to override the mind every single time. So I am going to tell you, you have to decide what do I deserve as far as behavior and treatment go and then stick to that. And you need to know, you need to know like you know, like you know, just like I said to the last person, there are millions of people in this world. If this is not the right person, if this has happened, it's the universe or God or your angels or your loved ones on the other side showing you, look, we're trying to take, we're trying, I'm, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm laughing as I channel this. We're trying to take the trash out. Stop acting like this is goodwill and bringing the used goods back in your house. Oh my God. You are not goodwill. Don't don't take no. in somebody else's garbage. I'm so sorry. I wish right. you could see my face. I'm so red right now. Okay, what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> oh, I think that's hilarious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I know this means a lot. It's okay. To me. But here's what I'm gonna tell I you. I really, I just wanted to see what if you could pick up what his intentions are in the relationship. Because I don't want to misjudge yeah, him. Sweetie, sweetie, listen the, to me. You know, listen, the, listen. The he showed you his intentions. Because anybody who truly cares about you and wants a future with you, and you can ask any man, don't ask another woman because we don't believe other women. Ask any man friend you have. 
If a man believes you're the one, he's not leaving you for a week. He's not leaving you for a month because he's afraid somebody else is going to snatch you up. I, at bottom line, I well, cannot yeah, be we got more fight. clear he than that. And then, if he left you yeah, alone, he didn't just like say he was taking a break. It doesn't matter if he said it or I'm not. Sorry. Anybody who is afraid of leave, losing you, anybody who thinks they want a future with you and is afraid of losing you is not going to, uh, and the term is abandon you, take a break, ghost, whatever word, whatever verbiage you want to use, they're not going to do that because they know you're a, they're, they know you're a catch and somebody else is going to come snag you up. So I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you're making excuses for this and you're making excuses for him. And that's OK. I've been there. I've been in this situation where I wanted so badly to believe this person loved me as much as I love them. But no, they might not have been capable of it. That's not my problem. That's their problem. But I had to get to the point where I realized if this person really cared about me, if this person truly loved me, <laughs> they would know there's a line behind them waiting for me and or they don't care. And they're just walking away because they don't care if I'm here when they get back or not. So you know what I say? Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. If you cannot come corrected, if you cannot be a full grown man in this relationship, then I'm going to find one. It's that simple. If this guy cannot show up and be a full grown man who's ready for a committed situation like you are, thank you, next. And let me tell you, if you let this guy go, if you let him go, and I'm sorry to say this, but you probably should, within a month to a month and a half, you are going to meet somebody brand new who is looking for everything you're looking for. Now, us people, uh, people in general, we want to win. We want to win. We want to prove we weren't wrong. Right? We just want to prove we were not wrong. And that we went through all of this for some reason because it's going to lead to something bigger and better. Maybe the bigger and better is with the you're next so person. Yeah, you're so dead on. <laughs> and I, you, everything you're saying. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I I am speaking from experience. Please trust me on this. I am speaking from a lot of experience. Um, believe me, I I've had exes that have slept with my friends, great friends, by the way. I have had exes that have asked out my friends. I have had exes that just like like this, disappear for a little while, then think they can walk right back in like nothing ever happened. Yeah, no, 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 sweetie. I am not a rental car. I am not a rental vehicle. You don't get to show up and drive me whenever you want. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, we don't play that game anymore because now yeah, I, we have self-respect and self-worth. Yeah, I just told him. I just told him I was in the shelf ornament when he called, wanted me to come over. And I was like three hours later when I come over, he's like, well, well how come it took you so long? I said, what, you think I'm sitting there waiting on your phone call that might or might not come? And you think I'm a damn shelf ornament? Okay, sweetie, here's a thing. I said, I'm not, I'm not your. Oh, I'm so sorry. I accidentally hit the button. Here's what I'm going to tell you. It's good that you said that, but you still went. After a month, you still went. And I really, I wanted to keep letting you talk, but I'm at the 29 minute mark and I want to thank everybody who joined me today. Thank you so much. I will be back next Monday at noon, taking calls, answering questions.